Well, in 1991, I, I got on the special response team, which is a ATF SWAT team. Um, at that time, we were divisional, meaning all of our divisions had their own SWAT team. So I was on the Dallas division team. Uh, we had um, just gotten back from Ruby Ridge uh, in late 1992. And uh, we were told that we had this warrant that we were going to be serving at uh, this religious compound that had machine guns and hand grenades and things like that. They tried to get information to arrest him away. So that's where it started that in, in 93 and in February 28th, we, we executed the search warrant at the uh, Branch Davidian compound. And we're met with uh, a hail of gunfire as we exited the trailers and we returned fire and then the rest is history. Did you come close to, to being injured? I don't know if I came close to being injured. I mean, that, that terminology, I do, it, when I exited the trailer, the bullets were flying everywhere. It's, I can't even explain the volume of fire that was taking place. Uh, I ran down the front of the compound and turned to go into the front doors, which was our, my team's assignment was to make entry through the front doors after they had been breached. And when I turned the corner, uh, one of the Branch Davidians had just dropped a hand grenade that exploded and had wounded my team leader who was in front of me. So he went to the, there's a fence there, and he went off to the side, and I, I was shooting into a window at an individual with a rifle, and I went through the gate, and when I looked down, the front doors were closed. So I slid down to one knee, and we're, again, probably six or eight windows just in my vicinity you could see the muzzle blast, the blinds were being blown out, glass flying out. So you're taking fire from all these different windows. Um, one of those windows did shoot an AK-47 probably a foot and a half in front of me across the sidewalk that sprayed my face with concrete. And uh, that's what convinced me to, to get back around the corner and seek some better cover, which was behind a car. Um, that was probably the closest, you know, I guess if you want to say that, they did shoot some rounds through the car I was hiding behind. Um, and one of our agents was in a car, behind a car next to me, and he was shot and killed. So, um, you know, it, it was a tragic day, uh, not only for ATF and uh, the families that affected all the agents, but, you know, for law enforcement, uh, it was the beginning of this anti police mentality. Uh, a lot of misnomers about what we were there to do, uh, why we were there to serve the warrant, but the end result was they had unregistered machine guns and unregistered hand grenades, and we were there to do the search warrant to seize those items. Simple as that. So you were able to go back during one of the ceasefires? When did you leave that car? Uh, well, the, the gunfight went on for, golly, an hour and 45 minutes or something. So I was behind that for an hour and 45 minutes with another agent who had been wounded in the legs. Um, so, you know, we were just in that gunfight for that time. There were some ceasefires as we were getting towards the end of the gunfight. Um, and as soon as you'd stand up, somebody would start shooting at you again, so you'd duck back down. So it took two or three of the ceasefires before it finally stuck. And then we were able to get up and go get our wounded and, and help everybody get off the off the area. <coughs> what were you all talking about uh, at, as a result of this encounter? What, what were you, that day and the next couple of days, what, what were the agents doing? Or well, at, at that time, I mean, we were still 100 percent focused on uh, doing our law enforcement mission. Uh, so that evening, literally that evening, after getting some more ammunition and things like that, uh, many of the agents that had been out there were, were deployed uh, to keep the perimeter on the compound. Uh, some of us were released, got some rest, but the next morning we were back out there. Uh, we were still in the same bloody, muddy clothes that we had on the day before. We didn't have any others. Uh, money was pretty tight for ATF back in those days. Uh, you know, any of the helmets, any of the equipment we had, we'd gotten as uh, excess equipment from the Army. It was DRMO stuff. So, as we call it, 
Um, so it was a tougher time, a different time for ATF. Um, you know, so we were back out there uh, for several days until ultimately enough other agents and the FBI was involved that uh, those that were involved in the initial shooting uh, were told to go on home. So we were out there several days after that. But again, the, we were just focused on getting those kids out of there at that time. The next day it was just getting the kids out of there.